throne room, that we may be more like you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Glory to the Lamb. Things are happening. Yes, it is. <laughs> God is good all the time, isn't he? Even when we're boneheads. <laughs> He's faithful. Even when we're faithless. But you know, he's always trying to get us in position. Without position, you can't get nothing. Everything's a battle of positioning. Amen? That's what the Lord told him. Look at man, there's a battle coming and you got to get positioned. See, but there are things that block position. Things that we want to get understanding and wisdom on so that we can see things all the way through. Follow the king of glory and establish his glory. But without being positioned, we get easily swayed. It's like a boat that's floating around there with no anchor, no sail, just floating all over the place. And it's moved by wind of doctrine, belief, emotions. You know, one of the greatest healings that we need to have today is emotional healing. Because many times emotional healing is what follows emotional healing is physical healing. And in that, what God is looking for is faithful individuals that are willing to fight for position. And we are in a war. You know, people don't realize that we are in a war. You know, you and I were born in a war. There's a spiritual battle going on. And in two, see, Jesus is not religious. He's the chief and commander of the military operation. See, he came into this world to reestablish his army that had been shattered and forsaken. And you and I are part of an army. And until we get a military mindset, it's going to be very difficult to follow the Lord. Because he says, if you love me, you'll obey me. See, so every ministry is a place in where God has a command center. Everyone has a different function. Our function here is like the seals. Not these kind, or, or. These are military seals. We are being trained here as a military operation. We go through special training. There's a special training. We're not called to be pew sitters. We're not called to be ushers in the body. We're not to be called to just be in a choir. We are called to be leaders in the body of Christ. Amen. We're to be leading a military operation to kick butt on the devil and rescue those who have been taken captive. That's why God started this ministry. That's why it's called True Ministries and Total Freedom because we hate demon management. There's a difference. So the things that God is going to reveal here is deep calling on to deep revelations so that you and I can be equipped, trained, weaponized, and anointed so that you're not swayed by emotion so that you're not swayed by your past so that you're not swayed by thoughts so you're not swayed by circumstances so you're not swayed by trials and tribulations and afflictions see the word says as a new creation in Christ we must deny ourselves that means everything. Everyone say, I've been bought, been bought. By, the by the blood of the Lamb. It is no longer my life. No longer he, bought he bought it. I have no life. I have no life. It's, his. it's his. Man, if we could just hold on to that all the time. It's amazing how we think we just go do, an, go do anything. Buy whatever we want to buy. Do whatever we want to do and say no to Jesus. 
It's a shame because people don't carry the fear of God. That's reverence, honor, and respect. You know, I remember after I'd gotten saved, I had a 80-pound Doberman that my wife trained very well. <laughs> Anyways, when I took over, <laughs> she learned how to be a warrior. <laughs> when this dog used to walk with me, she needed no, no leash. I would walk, and she would bump her nose on my knee, either side, to make sure, boom, boom always making contact. I would stop, she would sit. I don't care if a cat, anything came across, she would look at you. Now? <laughs> when I would say go, she would go. When I whistle, she would come back, and she'd come right back on the side. That's how God wants us. Amen. Boom, always making contact. Always making contact. See, you and I can't live a life as Christians without making contact on a constant level. You cannot make it. Oh, you may make it in the heaven by the skin of your teeth, but will you fulfill the mission you've been called to fulfill? Amen. Will you fulfill it? Jesus was sent on a mission to fulfill. Amen? So there's a place where God's trying to do something all the time with me and you. It's called resetting reality. Resetting reality. Resetting reality. What is reality to you? The things you see that are tangible? How you feel? Is that reality? Then you're out of order. Because reality should be the things you don't see, not the things you do see. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. there therefore we do not what lose heart sway be misled discouraged even though our outward man is perishing yet the inward man is being what renewed day by day for our light affliction everyone say light affliction <laughs> which is but a moment even though for sometimes it seems like it's forever but it's only a moment compared to eternity is working, everyone say is working. is working, for us a far more exceedingly eternal weight of glory. So it's working for, let me tell you, you know why afflictions come? Get your attention. Afflictions are used to reset our look, our outlook from the temporary to the eternal. I'm going to say that again. Afflictions come, trials come to reset, to get our attention to reset our outlook beyond the temporary into the eternal, which is true reality. The temporary reality which we see here, it's temporary, isn't it? It's actually a reflection of the true reality, except for this reflection we live in is corrupted. That's why Jesus spoke in parables. There were parallels. He was always trying to bring true reality and use a reflection of the temporary reality to compare. But this one we live in is corrupt. It is a temporary reality because it is corrupt. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Let's start at verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory. While we don't look at the things which are what? Seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the, temp for the things which are seen are what? Temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? They're eternal. Wow. So we see we li live in two realities. But one is a true reality and one is a reflection. One's an eternal one. 
One is temporary. And what you put your focus on more is what you live in more. Oh, hallelujah. The temporary realm is a reflection of the eternal realm, but of course this reflection is corrupt and it's ruled by evil satanic kingdom, which is used and manipulated. It uses deception, uses fear, uses lust of the eye, uses lust of the flesh, uses pride of life to keep individuals in a place of deception so they maintain this place they can never reach true reality or escape the temporary reality. So know that your battle is to prevent you from resetting. The enemy will do everything he can to prevent you from reset. There are blockers that, re that prevent us from resetting. We need to reset our thoughts. We need to reset our heart. We need to reset our motive. We need to reset our attitude. We need to get reset so we can get connected and refreshed and renewed every single day. That's why he says, seek me every morning. Pray every morning. Get dressed with the full armor of God. And people call themselves Christians that don't even get dressed with the full armor of God. Because you know what? They're not even interested in a battle because they're living in a temporary corrupted realm and disconnected from the eternal one, even though they call themselves Christians. But they're going to be pretty disappointed when they get before the Lord. See, the only ones that enter say just and righteousness. You must be one that practices righteousness and rejects lawlessness. You can't even vote for someone that promotes abortion, same-sex marriage, because it will be counted to you. Amen? Amen? So you better be careful what you vote for and what you promote. That's why you and I should always be promoting what God promotes and rejecting what God rejects. Amen. It's amazing all these politicians, all these people, a bunch of heathens running for president. The only thing they can do is accuse righteous because they haven't got an agenda. But they're wicked and evil. They're liars and pretenders. They come in stealth, offering things they can't even give you. It's amazing to me. And how many people are deceived? And how many people call themselves Christians who, vote, who voted for Obama? Who's a promoter of wickedness and evil? It's got nothing to do with color or race or creed. It's got, you know, by the fruits. What happened? It was the body of Christ that prevented the righteous to get into place because they didn't fight for it. But I'm telling you, God is shaking. He's shaking every area right now that can be shaken. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Resetting reality. Is everybody okay? Better lock the door in case somebody tries to run out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want the truth, right? Amen. That's right. Bring it on. <laughs> well, you come to the right place, brother. <laughs> Glory to God. Verse 28. Somebody throw him a Bible. Don't hit him too hard, though. <laughs> Glory. Joel 2, 28. Let's speak it. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Why? He says it. Your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. Prophesy. And your Old men shall dream dreams, and young men shall see visions. Again, I'm glad I still see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Why is he going to pour out his spirit? This was after the Feast of Pentecost. 
which had to be fulfilled. Only Jesus can fulfill the feast. You know, many believers don't even know about the seven feasts of the Lord, which everything revolves around. If they knew about the feast of the Lord, they would know what prophetic things are about to happen next. Does everybody get it? Everything revolves around two things, the feast of the Lord and the tabernacle of the Lord. Everything. Everything. And if you don't know what both of those are, then you won't know prophetic and won't have prophetic understanding. I don't care how much you read the Bible. You still won't get it. Oh, hallelujah. But he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit to what? I'm going to release my spirit of truth to awaken many into true reality and bring them escape from the temporary through dreams, vision, gifts of the spirit, the word of truth, the Bible, signs and wonders. How many of y'all know there's an awakening going on? Amen. You know, there's an awakening even through chaos, isn't there? Amen. Trials and tribulations and afflictions. It's amazing. You won't get stuff on the news because they lie. But let me tell you, you get stuff on, uh, on Twitter and stuff like that, people that are in locations, because you know what the news media is now? People with a cell phone. That's the true news. The media lies like crazy. But the true media is individuals with a cell phone. I, I don't know if you know or not, but what was it in uh, Hong Kong? You know, they had three million protesters. They had thousands of people singing hallelujah to Jesus in a socialist country. They are willing to die. They don't care. Can you imagine a three million people protesting against their communist government? Do you know that the owner of Google is worth 57 million dollars? Million? Billion. 57 billion dollars and is a communist. And he owns Google. And he was born in Moscow. So remember, Satan is, there, Satan is a ruler of this world, right? Now, remember, he used to be right, God's right-hand man that was the praise and worship leader. So he knows, how, he knows about media. He knows about music. He knows in how to penetrate people's minds and hearts and souls and bring deception and delusion and confusion. He knows how to manipulate individuals. That's why he's called the most cunning beast. See, when you see beast, that's a sim symbolic to fallen angel. Is everybody okay? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God is bringing an awakening right now. He's bringing an awakening through signs, wonders, through the spirit, through gifts, through dreams and visions. He said in verse 30, Now will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, called an eclipse, and the moon into blood, called a blood moon, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So we've had all of these things happened already there'll be more and more believe me jesus is approaching the closer he gets the more shaking the earth gets the more light penetrates darkness and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved for in mount zion and in jerusalem there will be deliverance as the lord has said among the rem uh, rem remnant whom the lord calls so we see right now that these signs and wonders and events and afflictions, chaos and, and destruction, distresses is to awaken through individuals to bring them to salvation so that they would follow. See, there's got to, in following, now after you've come to salvation, you know, once you're saved, that, that's not over with. <laughs> that's just the beginning. Now you've got to maintain salvation. But there's a doctrine from the enemy that says, once saved, always saved. Yeah, I want to see you get in front of the Lord and have him say, come on in when you're committing adultery, lying and cheating and fornication. Yeah, sure, come on in to eternal life, which is pure and holy. Right. Ain't going to happen. So we are always maintaining an awakening. Why do, how do we do that? Constantly resetting ourselves. Constantly resetting ourselves. Constantly resetting ourselves, no matter what. Listen, you have to reset yourself every single day. Every day. Those who seek the kingdom 
of God and this righteousness, all things will be added. Why? Because they're resetting themselves. You can't skip a day of prayer. You can't skip a moment of resetting. Sometimes you've got to reset yourself even during the day. You've got to constantly be aware of these things. You know what? When you are resetting yourself, that's what's walking in the Spirit. Amen. You've been reset. That's walking in the Spirit. Now you are sensitive. Your antennas are out. You know what's getting ready to happen. You are now in fellowship with the Spirit of truth who tells you all truth, guides you to all truth, and prepares you and trains you. In Mark 11. Ours. Why do people backslide? Why do they make wrong decisions? No reset. No reset. Matthew 11. Can God trust someone that doesn't reset themselves? No. Uh, Matthew. Did I say Mark? Oh, that's the next guy. How many of y'all want to earn the trust of the Lord? How many of y'all want to go deeper? Well, if those desires aren't there, then you are not connected to the kingdom of Christ. Well, I've been a believer for 30 years. Bummer. And you're still not on fire for God yet? Those who are lukewarm, he will spit out. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to blow. They're going to be freaked out when the rapture comes and they're left behind. But I was a good person. Good people don't enter heaven. Only those who practice righteousness and reject lawlessness. Those are the only ones that enter. Matthew eleven twenty five. Oh, happy days. Is everybody okay? Amen. Glory. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one whom the Son wills to reveal him. You know, many people don't know the Father Amen. because the Son hasn't revealed him to them. They may know the Son, but they don't know the Father, but they don't know the Son in fullness. See, there's two different characters, even though they were one. One was a Savior. One is a deliverer. One is the overseer of all things. One becomes a father to you, where we cry, Abba, where you, are, you know that you are a son and a daughter, an offspring of God Almighty. That's where he becomes father. See, most people only know him as savior because he rescued their blessed assurance. But they don't know him as dad because there really isn't a relationship. There's never been a true connect a true reset. See, we, we are to know him as father, dad, lover of my soul. And then there's the part where we know Jesus as commander in chief, military, holder of all things, provider of all things. And his spirit, it is the spirit of the father that came in the Son, and the Son paid the price so the Spirit of the Father could be released to all mankind. Does everybody get this? Amen. That's when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you speak the Father's language called tongues. Oh, happy days. Verse 26. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you 
who labor and are heavy laden, and I will what? Give you rest. In other words, reconnect with me. Reset with me. Look at this. Take my yoke upon you, and what? Learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, Jesus came to earth to reset reality. So that we can connect with him by his spirit and reset reality. That was why he came. He couldn't just come to save you and me. He had to reconnect us. He had to bring the spirit so that we would know that there's two different realms. People are still lost. They call Jesus the Lord, but they don't serve him. They still serve themselves. They only know Jesus as Savior. They really don't know him as Lord. Because when he's your Lord, you don't, have a, you don't have a life. Amen? John 16. And people are still fighting for their lives. Instead of surrendering them. Because they live in a survival mode instead of a surrender mode. John 16. In verse 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Nevertheless, I tell you the what? The truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. Now, Jesus is telling them, it's to your advantage I go away. Why? Because he's the carrier of the spirit of the Father, and unless he leaves, they can't get him. But he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict. Oh, Convict. I said, convict the world of what? Sin. Sin is the presence of evil. The act of the presence is called transgression. And then iniquity comes from the transgression, which is a curse down the family line. That's why our children are messed up, because of what we did or our forefathers did, and nobody ever broke it and repented from it. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of ignorance, lack of knowledge. Amen? Because they're, they're ignorant of the truth. Call themselves Christians. They don't even read the Bible. How are they going to know? Basic instructions, right? Before leaving earth. And when he comes, he will convict the world of the presence of evil, their associations with darkness, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin because they do not what? Believe or what's the word believe mean? Follow. How can you call yourself a Christian if you don't follow the ways of Christianity? You won't. God calls people like that a liar. I am a Christian, but I do what I want. You're a liar. No fear of the Lord. No conviction. Hardened heart. I just do what I feel like doing. Right, that's the doctrine of the devil. Do what you feel like doing. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. He says, I still have many things to say to you, but you're not going to be able to bear them. Why? Because they didn't have the Holy Spirit yet. However, when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, has come, he will what? Guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. For he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and do what? And declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So we shouldn't be lacking anything. A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. Again, he's called the spirit of truth. See, 
true reality is always, the Holy Spirit's always to get me and you to resist the temporary reality. Resist, the Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil. Amen? So the enemy's always trying to attempt and attack us in our hearts and our minds and our wills and desires and trying to refocus us. He's trying to refocus us on temporary and not eternal. So we've got to constantly always resist that. Amen? How about selfish ambitions? Amen? Lavishness. All, there are things, sin. Sin is a blocker of resetting. There are things that block resetting, unbelief. You've got to reach a level of faith to be able to reset. Sin is known as the presence of evil. It is a blocker of the connection, of the connection to eternal, the eternal reality and prevents you from resetting. How about unforgiveness, bitterness? All of those things will cause a person or will block. They're blockers. Greed, deception, disobedience, rebellion. All of these are blockers of resetting and connecting. We want to live a life where true reality is always before me and you. It's always there, no matter what we're going through. We see through the temporary into the eternal. So we're living from the future and not from the past. Amen? We live from the future to the present. That's the only way you can live from the future to the present is to be reset continuously to the reality of truth. It's eternal reality, not temporary. In Psalm 16, is everybody okay? Amen. Are you getting this? Resetting reality. Things that block. Reset. How about love of money? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. All of these things will cause a blockage to reset. Oh, hallelujah. Um, Psalm 16. Did I say Psalm? What did I say, though? Psalm 16. Okay, yeah. Verse 7. I will what? Bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have what? Set the Lord always before me. That's because he reset. So we got to always reset and put the Lord before us. Just think if Jesus was physical, walking with you all day long. I want you to imagine this. Physically walking with you all day long. If you have been reset, in the eternal reality, that is a truth. Amen. That is a reality. If he isn't, then you're not reset. Amen. Does everybody understand that? Only when he is physically right there with you all the time, in the spirit, are you reset. If he isn't, you're not reset. Because people wouldn't be doing the things they do. Oh, Lord, cover your eyes. I'm about to do something crazy. It don't work that way. <laughs> he sees through your hand. <laughs> I will bless the Lord who's given me counsel. You think rejecting counsel is going to block as a uh, resetting reality? Yeah. It will always block it. Because God's waiting for you to fulfill the first counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night season. I will set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I won't be what? Well, snap. 
If you're reset into the true reality, the eternal realm, amen, and the Lord is present with you all the time and you acknowledge that, you see it, you sense it, then you won't be moved because you know everything's going to work to the good no matter what. Therefore, my heart is glad, my glory rejoices, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you won't leave my butt in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Set the Lord always before me is resetting reality. Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3. In verse 17. Is everybody there? Praise God, I got two people there. Let's go. <laughs> Verse 17, let's speak it. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. So he was telling us, though, set your mind, set your thoughts and desires. Those who do that set their minds, thoughts, and desires on worldly, tangible things of life. They're not able to reset to the eternal reality. They're forgetting that they're citizenships of heaven. Amen? They're blocked by sin, not able to reset or reconnect. They can't get restored, renewed, and refreshed in Christ. So they look for something else. In Romans 8. Oh, what a time to be reset because there's so much influence all over. So as we begin to continue to look at this as a military mission, and we are soldiers of Christ, there are people that you know that have your back and those that don't. Amen. You won't go out on a mission with someone you know ain't right. You know you're not going to go on a mission. You know that someone hasn't been reset or has a dire desire to be reset. God looks the same way. Why would he be with them either? Romans 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? Die, because living according to the flesh is a blocker to reconnect. Amen? You can't reset, can you? But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Amen. Live for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. These are sons of God. Now, if you're led by the Spirit of God, are you living a constant reset life? Yes. Amen. For you did not receive the spirit of adoption again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 
And if children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now there's an individual that's been reset. Amen? For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. In other words, this reality will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. How? It's going to burn up. And it will be no more. So those who are still caught in this realm will be destroyed with it. People don't get that yet. Because the creation itself will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. But not only that, but we, who, we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, <laughs> even we ourselves groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Oh, that's called endurance. Amen? Living according to the flesh is a blocker of reconnecting and resetting. Again, sufferings are cause for awakening. Now, you don't go out and afflict yourself because you want to awaken, you know. <laughs> Just have somebody step on your foot and you'll get awakened. But that's not the correct awakening. We need awakening and quickening of the spirit. Before anything can happen, there's got to be true repentance. Amen? Amen? There must be true repentance. Matthew 13. Happy days. Matthew 13, and verse 18. Is everybody there? Amen. Therefore, hear. Everyone say, hear. hear. See, there's a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing receives, believes, and executes. Listening goes, yeah, 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 yeah. To pacify the other person, say, leave me alone, I'm really not hearing. Yeah, that's called listening. That's why the Lord says, hear what the Spirit says. Is everybody okay? Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. This is a parallel. What's he trying to do? Or bring reality from the eternal and the temporary. He's trying to reset. Remember, Jesus came to reset true reality, didn't he? When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches it away what was sown in his heart. Why? Because the seed is the promoter of resetting. Amen? That's why we must read. Water every day. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he what? Stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. unfruitful. Why? Because it brings a person into compromised position. They begin to compromise. They begin to hold back what's due to God. 
But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands, in other words, receives, believes, and executes, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Again, the seed is the word of God, which aids in resetting reality, doesn't it? And Luke 14. Yeah. Again, the enemy is out to block every opportunity for you to reset. Luke 14, 25. Let's speak it. Now a great multitude went with Jesus, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes after me and does not hate, is everybody there? His father and mother, his wife and children, brothers, and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Why? Because he is saying you must disconnect from these to be reconnected to him. Amen? There must be a level to where you're saying, listen, look, when I got born again, my family, my physical family was no longer my family. My father that was physical was no longer my father. He was my father. I thanked my mother and father for putting up with me and bringing me into this realm. But this realm was temporary. I'm no longer of this realm. I've been born again as a joint heir of Christ and an offspring of God Almighty as his son. And this world is no longer my home. See, you and I have to reset that all the time. All the time. This is how the enemy gets to us to cause us to think about uh-oh, retirement, all of these other things. God is your retirement. Amen. Amen. You, you do what's right. He's got, he's got it for you, man. He's got full health insurance. Amen. He's got a retirement plan. He's got all kinds of benefits. Daily, he loads you with benefits. But people don't get it. They rely on themselves and their doctors more than they do God because they're not reset to the true reality which provides everything, everything. He makes a way where there seems to be no way, and he works all things to the good. But there's a place, he says, you must work out your own salvation. In other words, you're the only one that can reset yourself. No one else can. And quit relying on other people to reset you. You got to get reset yourself. Verse 27. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish and all see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Why wasn't he able to finish? Because he didn't reset. Because, see, if you reset, it doesn't matter who's against you. He is in me is greater than he is in the world. Amen. If God be for me, who can be against me? I'm more than a conqueror. Snap. Verse 31, or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes out with 20,000? Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all, whoever of you does not forsake all, forsake all, forsake all, forsake all, that he has cannot be my disciple. In other words, you are in a place where you realize you don't own nothing. You are a steward of everything you have. Amen. It's his, not yours. So depending on how we take care of it, depending on what we do with it, determines whether we get more or not, Amen. or it's taken away or not. Amen? Amen? Is everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. Against once awakened to the new reality of truth 
in the eternal realm, there must be a consistency of resetting, setting your will, setting your desires. You must stay connected, stay obedient to the word. Why? Because it will keep you connected. Anything from that will start to disconnect you. And once the disconnect comes, you've fallen short. You begin to sway. You begin to compromise. You begin to accept the voice of the stranger. He said, deny yourself, pick up the cross and fight, right? And then you can follow. There's no follow without a fight. Again, I'm going to say that some people think that they're following the Lord. Listen, if you didn't fight to connect, you ain't following the Lord. Amen. You're following your emotions or imaginations. But you ain't following the Spirit. Revelation 12. Now let's go to 1 Peter first. 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. Glory. Oh, snap. First Peter chapter 5. Training for reigning. Is God preparing us for something? Yeah. yeah. There's a floods that are coming. We're already in one now, but there's another few floods that are going to come. Many people will get blown away from it. They'll get wiped out and pulled away. You know, the Bible tells us that in the latter days, many will fall from the faith, taking heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Just turn on the news. You've got a deceiving spirit and a doctrine of demon. Turn on the music. Look at MTV. Everything is backed by doctrines of demons and seducing seductive spirits, swaying many believers, preventing them and blocking them from resetting. That's why the Bible says hang out with those who have a pure heart. Why? Because it's so bad what? Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. Amen? Why? Because hanging around with those people says you approve of them. And that's a blocker of reset. Oh, we've got to have the understanding that we must avoid all blockers of reset. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Hello. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the proud. God resists the proud. So would pride be a blocker? Yeah, he's going to resist you from resetting. Until you do what? Humble yourself. You better get the recipe for humble pie. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God's grace is his plan for escape. Hello. Then you can reset. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. You know, there's times when you got to ask yourself and take a moment, am I really in God's plan or am I in my plan? You know, people can manipulate yourself. Oh, it feels good. It must be this. Why well, haven't any had any tax of the devil? Well, then you know it ain't God's plan. Everything seems to be just going smooth. There's no problems. <laughs> Hello, dummy. <laughs> Verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting your care upon him, for he cares for you. Oh, I got it, Lord. I don't, I don't need to cast this on you. I got it. Blocker. Pride. Pride blocker. Be sober. What's sober mean? Alert. Be vigilant, consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, hello, walks about like a roaring lion, means he's got a big mouth, seeking whom he may deceive, devour, compromise, and block from resetting. Resist him. 
steadfast means consistently resist him in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everyone goes through it. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you what? Suffered. Why did, he, why did you suffer? Awaken. Amen? Remember, two things that happen in the suffering also. Not only is there awakening, but it exposes your impurities and exposes your enemy. Oh, hallelujah. After you what? Suffered. <laughs> yes. A while. Then what does it say? Perfect. Establish. Strengthen in what? Settle you so you don't, you're not moved. To him be glory and the dominion forever and ever. And amen. Revelation 12. Remember, prayer reconnects and resets reality. Suffering is to awaken to reset. If you miss prayer, you know it. You miss it two days, everyone knows it. Revelation 12. See, people pray without connecting, though. So you've missed prayer. Hmm. See, the purpose of prayer is to connect. <laughs> people pray but don't connect. So you miss prayer. You didn't get a chance to reset. Well, I was busy. Hmm. So when something happens and you're calling on the Lord, he may be busy. Lord, I've been waiting. I'm busy. Remember, what you sow is what you reap. Revelation 12, 10. Then one more scripture. Glory. Let's speak in. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. In other words, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God, God Almighty called the anointing has come. The spirit of the Father has come. Hallelujah. Why did he come? For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. You are being accused all the time. And they overcame him by the what? Blood of the lamb. What? Through repentance. That's what activates the blood. And by the word of their testimony. That's the confession of your mouth of the word. And they did not love their lives to death. They denied themselves. Why? The law of the spirit is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that it is a what? A short time. So they overcame the voice of influence that would disconnect and block them from resetting to reality and the truth of reality. But they overcame with the blood of repentance, confession of the word, and denial of self. I want to close at Jude. Glory. Jude. Chapter 1. <laughs> Verse 14. Everybody okay? Amen. Are you learning something? Amen. Are you getting that? Amen. You know, think about how many times we didn't really reset when we should have. And just went about and we realized things were getting worse. I just don't understand. <laughs> you know, the reason why you don't understand is because you didn't reset. Amen. Verse 14. Now Enoch in the seventh 
from Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Who's that? Us. To do what? Execute judgment. You know that you will be a part of the execution of judgment. Thank God you're going to be totally different. Because on the execution of judgment, which the Lord will go before us, we won't see the faces. You won't recognize. You'll see wickedness and evilness. Just think about how this will be. We may be bringing execution on some of our own family members because they rejected the truth. But in that realm, you are no longer the same the way you are here. We will, this whole realm for me and you will be gone. Even the memory of it will be gone eventually. This is just training session. It's preparation to enter the other realm forever. Because in that realm, God has got a plan going on that you and I can't even get yet. You remember, he's eternal. We still have a hard time day by day. <laughs> to execute judgment on all. To convict all who are ungodly among them all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things that which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, these are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit or not, listen, not having the spirit in this arena means that you're not being led by the spirit because you're not resetting. Because you cannot be led by the spirit unless you've been reset. Being reset to reality, true reality, that you're a joint heir of Christ that you're blessed with every spiritual blessing, seated in heavenly places, that this home is not yours. It's temporary. Amen? Amen. These are sensual persons who cause the visions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy what? Faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, which means praying in tongues. How many of y'all want to build up your faith? Pray in the Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And then some have compassion, making a distinction, but others slap the hell out of and make room for heaven. And some have compassion and making a distinction, but others save with what? Fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever and ever. Amen. Listen, if you're in this room today and you want to have a deeper walk and there are things that are blocking you, I encourage you to stand now. Again, if you want to have a deeper walk and remove the things that are blocking you, stand now. I want you to repeat after me, Holy Father. Holy Father I come to you in the name of Jesus. I, come to you in the name of Jesus. I repent, I repent for, all for all associations and agreements, and agreements of, everything done, of everything I've done, everything I agreed with. Everything I touched, everything I promoted, that brought any spirit, any curse, any sickness, any disease, any bondage, or any voice of the stranger 
that would block my resetting and reconnecting to you and true reality. Have mercy upon me and let your grace abound abundantly. Remove these things from me as I cast them from me to the pit. Every evil, unclean, deceptive, delusional, fearful, antichrist spirit. Spirit. That, is that is blocking my resetting, my resetting to, the Christ, to the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the of the Holy Spirit. And, the and the power and freedom, and the freedom. In, the Christ, in the kingdom of Christ. I command to loose, command to loose and, leave and leave me now and go to the pit. To the pit. Father, Father, I want a deeper walk, a deeper walk with, you. with you. Show me. Show me. Teach me, Teach me. Establish, me. establish me, perfect me, perfect. Seal, me. seal me, and send me, and send me. As, a as a true witness that is reset, reset. reconnected, reconnected. Renewed. renewed, refreshed, refreshed. And, restored. and restored in your glory, in, your glory. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Give me a hand.